when I reach 1000 subscribers I will be giving away a $25 Amazon gift card away. To enter like subscribe and leave a comment below. Posted by you slash LMJ. Want bananas? You got it. I'll readily admit that this one is relatively mild malicious compliance compared to most of what's on this subreddit. No one got put out, inconvenienced, or came under any harm, so apologies in advance if this seems a little lame. Also, apologies for formatting. I'm on mobile. The office I used to work in was located right next to a grocery store. This place was a popular lunch destination for people that worked in this building because it had a lot of quick options for lunch. Also worth mentioning, I worked with a great team. We got along great, would have no problem backing each other up, helping each other out with difficult issues, bringing stuff in for the team, doing favors, and so on. Because I was usually one of the first ones in, I was typically the first to take my lunch, unless I got stuck on a major shit hour of an issue. So, typically before I left, I would ask my nearby colleagues, hey, I'm heading next door to store, do you need me to grab anything for you? Periodically, one or two of my colleagues would ask me to grab something when I asked, and would give me some cash or their card, to buy what they requested. We all had a great working relationship, and they knew I wasn't going to do anything and award with their card or cash. It was no trouble for me, because I was going anyway, and I usually came right back with my lunch, and ate in the break room, or at my desk. One of my colleagues, let's call him Daniel, had a usual request, bananas. This request was usually honored without incident. During one such lunch trip, I headed over to the produce department to the usual large display of bananas they have, but this time, I spotted something on the top shelf of the display that I had either never noticed before, or the store had just started stocking. Red bananas. I never knew that red bananas were a thing, so I had no advanced knowledge of what these looked like inside or tasted like. All I saw were these maroon colored bananas. I saw a sign for the red bananas, but I didn't see a price. I got an idea. I grabbed a bunch of conventional yellow bananas for my colleague, and broke off one of the red bananas from the bunch I saw. Not knowing how much they cost, I thought it would be a bad idea to buy a whole bunch, especially with someone else's money. I paid for the yellow bananas with the cash that Daniel gave me. I used my card to buy the red banana in my lunch, and I stuck the red banana in the bag with Daniel's bunch of yellow bananas. It turned out to be a good idea that I only bought one red banana because they rang up at $1.50 slash LB, and the yellow ones were probably $0.30 slash LB. So, after getting back to the office, I put the bag of bananas on Daniel's desk along with his change. He thanked me, and I headed back to my desk. I sent an M to a couple of my other colleagues. I bought and stashed a red banana in Daniel's bag. Let's see how long it takes for him to notice. About an hour later, I heard an exclamation from Daniel's desk, what the hell? He held up the odd colored banana. I told him while laughing, it's a red banana. It was pretty quiet work wise, so our small team all converged around this red banana in amazement and amusement. I did let Daniel know that I paid for it myself, because it turned out to be far more expensive than the normal ones. Someone asked the important question, how do we know if it's ripe? None of us had an immediate answer. A Google search told us that they're a dark maroon when they are ripe, so we thought it was okay. Daniel was not up for taste testing this variation of his favorite fruit. Another colleague, let's call him Mandrew, decided to give it a go. He tried to peel it and couldn't break the skin with his fingers. He used a plastic knife to nick the skin and tried again to peel it. The layers of skin had separated with the inner half of the skin still on the banana. We saw that the inside skin was a mix of white, green, and the maroon from the outside of the banana. The green didn't bode well, but there was no stopping after committing to this expedition. Andrew worked at this banana persistently for a few minutes and finally managed to get about an inch and a half of the white fruit exposed. It looked like any normal banana. After all that work, to get a little bit of the fruit out from under the skin, and completely undeterred by the previous struggle, Andrew took a bite. There was a very loud crunch followed by a surprised groan from Andrew. We all cracked up laughing. Never have I heard a banana crunch like that, not even with dried banana chips. 
It sounded like he bit into a large hard candy. It was a wonder that Andrew didn't crack a tooth on it. Suffice it to say, definitely not ripe. So there you have it. There's how a request for bananas turned into a hilarious break from office monotony. I did troll Daniel a few more times with requests for bananas, but this was probably the best one. Thanks for reading. Posted by you slash Limetri. Lazy accounts manager doesn't want to do his job. My company uses a website application to process the complex process flow of two of our products services. Example of complex, steps A, D, F, J need to happen to move to the next stage but B, F, J, P can move it too. Rather than developing our own process flow, we use WebServe, an online application that does a good job of handling our complex process flow. But, a co-worker brought to our attention an error when one of our clients complained of a problem. WebServe can pull reports on one of our product services that are in various stages of completion. The problem a co-worker found, was that during the stages 4 to 5, a few fields are showing up blank on the report, but still appear on the website. It took us a while, to figure out exactly what was going on as often the product service was at a later stage, when we discovered the error. I contacted our account manager at WebServe, and informed him in detail of what the problem was, how we found it, what it was doing, with multiple screenshots of both the WebServe site and the generated report. I politely asked, if he could have his dev team to fix this bug, and when we could get Anita Suaz to inform our clients. Our WebServe account manager quickly replies back with, I spoke with our ad team, Turns out these blank fields are from a different data table, that no longer gets used, when the next stage happens. This blank happens if that task, doesn't have all the fields entered when completed. Our system maps the populated field onto WebServe which is, why you see a number there until stage 5 and on happens. I was puzzled, none of what he said made sense. I didn't ask for an explanation of what the problem was. I knew there was a problem, because I told him about it. What I asked for was, when WebServe would fix this bug. My polite reply went as followed, while I get that explanation, it was basically what I just told you in different words. My team doesn't understand this, and our clients doesn't as well. If we see a field on the application, I should be able to see it on the report. So, I was curious, when we could get Anita for a fix. The next reply by him was truly baffling. The report pulls one to one data during the multi-stage process. It's just not possible to fix the report as there is nothing to fix. This is working as it was designed as I was told by the dev team. I shook my head in disbelief. Okay, if that's the case, can you tell me why your dev team designed WebServe to display information at stage 4 and remove that very information for stage 4 in the reports? Account manager, because this is not currently possible to update for a 1 to 1 report, the WebServe app is only populating the previous data, before it gets update. It's not accurate BTW. Again, my head shook as I replied, okay, wait, so either the issue is the stage 4 process is not showing accurate information on WebServe and the report is, or vice versa, either way, that's a bug don't you agree? Sorry if we got off on the wrong foot and I don't want to continue arguing semantics at this point. There is a bug on WebServe on either the app or the reporting process. Something that shouldn't be that difficult to fix. If fielder is blank, use field B for the report. I know you do this for the WebServe in multiple areas, and do it for the reports for other fields. Provide example. So, what I'm asking is, please provide this same logic on the WebServe app as the reporting service. Account manager, this is not a bug, but I agree with you, that this is not the ideal process due to the conflicting data. I'll tell you what, I'll submit an enhancement request to our dev team for them to review and prioritize as a potential future release. At this time, I can't provide you with an ETA or completion timeline. I'll keep you posted for Q1. 2020, I figure at this point he's being defensive, because he doesn't want to do work, is taking what I say personally, for some unknown reason, or he's got personal issues he's dealing with, and taking it out on our conversation. I take my time, and ask compliance to pull up our contract with WebServe. It takes a few days, because this isn't a high priority, just a fun project for me. 
but I find the paragraph dealing directly with the service, and how WebServe will take immediate action on bugs viruses and system down issues. Bugs being the keyword I was looking for, I went online, and quoted the part of the Webster's dictionary, that pertained to us, an incorrect or unexpected result, or to behave in unintended ways. So I neatly prepared a PDF copy of that sheet in our contract along with the penalty sheet. I attached it to the following email, okay, we understand that your dev team needs to review, said computer bug for errors and fixes. A future release is understandable, and getting back to us in Q1 of 2020 is fine. We will just expect a zero balance bill on all invoices until such time as you can make this fix. Seeing as the penalties would exceed our billable amount by day 15 of each month. Thank you for your time, and looking forward to hearing back to you in Q1 of next year. The emergency patch MA had arrived by the next morning and the issue was fixed within 24 hours of me sending my reply. Posted by u slash mytimary007. Don't make life easier for the client? Well, if you say so. As an editor at an engineering firm, my job was to check spelling and grammar, format documents, and check for consistency between cited references in the bibliography, etc. Big client had their own formatting template, which required me to check multiple extra items for large documents, which were about as interesting to me as drying paint. One of these extra items was verifying the number of line breaks before every heading and subheading, a different number of line breaks for each heading level. Headings and subheadings are used to organize text into chapters, subchapters, subsubchapters, and so forth. Reports for big client involved multiple authors, and none of them could be trusted not to alter the number of line breaks before a heading, after I checked it. And so the story begins with the opposite of malicious compliance. I call it beneficent deviation. I programmed the headings and subheadings, to include the appropriate amount of space automatically. While I was at it, I automated the amount of space between paragraphs. This saved the client money on me, I'm billable, and their own editors, who always double check my work. It was also ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, compliant, saved time, reduced risk of error in formatting, and removed an unnecessary step. Also, not having to count line breaks allowed me to focus on more important aspects of the document, and deliver quality results. This system worked flawlessly for about a year, and I never got any complaints, until the day I forgot to turn off track changes. While I always kept track changes on for editing, I typically turned it off when formatting to make the document less cluttered. Unfortunately, big client saw all those line breaks marked as removed. Kaoka, big client noticed you took the line breaks out of their document. Is that right? Me, well, yeah. But the spacing is the same. I automated it. Kaoka, what do you mean? Me, I mean if you print one copy using the line breaks in their version and print one copy with the built-in spacing in my version, it will look exactly the same. There is literally no difference, except that it saves time and effort for people editing the document. Kaoka, oh. Well, the client didn't understand that. They complained about the unnecessary rework you created, as they had to put hundreds of spaces back in the document. Me, wait they put them back in? Manually? Note, if they had simply done a global search for a paragraph mark, carrot p and replaced it with carrot p carrot p, this could have been fixed in 10 seconds, which is how I removed the extra line breaks to begin with. Instead, someone went through the 300 plus page document pressing the enter key after every paragraph, and counting out line breaks before headings and subheadings. Kaoka, yeah. They want you not to change their template anymore. Please be sure to use the one they provided. Me, yeah, okay. If that's what you want. Q, malicious compliance. Since then, I have used Big Client's exact template. As Big Client keeps their template in a file system I don't have access to, I make my Kawaka send me the latest and greatest every time, before I start work, just in case anything has changed, it never does. And, as a bit of petty revenge, I leave counting line breaks up to Big Client's editors, who seem to enjoy unnecessary work. I wish I could say there was a big payoff where one of big client's editors revolted, berated their higher ups, and decided to adopt my template, but nothing like that happened. What I do know, is that every hour an editor spends checking line breaks is money out of big client's pocketbook money they could have saved, 
by letting me use my workaround to their stupid rule. And, if big client has ever asked to go add a compliant, that's a lot of line breaks they will need to manually delete. Sorry this isn't one of those stories where the person who got complied with learns their lesson. Sadly, I was the one who had to learn. I never touched a client template again. As the saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. Edit, added space between carrot and B, so you can see the actual command. Riddick turned it into superscripts. Edit 2, fixed with backslash. Posted by u slash mlc2001. No one can leave, until we are all ready. Ok boss, whatever you say. Spoiler summary slash tl. Doctor, for the love of god and all that is holy please stop reading this paragraph right now. Unless you want to know what to expect in this story. Seriously, this whole paragraph is a summary so, if you don't want to know, skip the head to the bolded section. OMG I just realized the title is also kind of a spoiler. What can I do? How can I possibly fix this? In a fit, new boss makes a rule that everyone must leave at the same time. Ends up forcing himself and everyone else to sit around an extra 2 hours, unpaid, waiting for me to finish my job, for which I get paid extra, before admitting the rule was a bad idea and cancelling it. If you don't want to know what this story is about before reading it, please start here. In high school I worked in the kitchen at a summer camp. We were not paid hourly, we were paid per meal we worked. One summer they got rid of the chef who'd been working there for decades, and hired a new guy. Chef, who was a real piece of work. He was in his 60s, burned out in life, and had no love for the camp or the job. The former chef was in her 30s, high energy and had worked at the camp since she was a kid. Her kitchen was immaculate because she took pride in her work environment and genuinely loved the camp and her job. The camp only hired the new guy because they wanted to branch out into year-round programs and knew she'd be unavailable since she had a long-standing winter job. Soon after chef starts, the kitchen gets dirty real fast. He believes that cleaning the kitchen should be someone else's job, he's simply there to cook. The previous chef was there sun up to sundown, and in between lunch and dinner shifts, while we all had a few hours as a break, she was taking care of her kitchen keeping it tidy and organized. Chef starts showing up a few hours before meals, and then as soon as he's done cooking he is out of there, leaving a staff of underage kids to deal with washing everything, putting stuff away, properly wrapping and labeling leftovers, cleaning up the fridge and pantry storage, etc. None of us have been trained on food safety, and we've never deep cleaned the kitchen, because the former chef preferred to do it herself. Camp owner notices the issue and offers to pay us an extra meal for someone to stay late and deep clean the kitchen once a day, so I take most of those shifts. Chef is told, but I don't think he pays much attention until halfway through the season another cowalker asks to split the kitchen cleaning duties with me one evening. I say okay, but she proceeds to do nothing constructive, just seems to be puttering around, wasting time. Deep cleaning the kitchen involves 5 distinct parts, so I finished 4 of 5, and then I tell her that, if she wants to get paid she can do part 5, the only part left, which is both the easiest and fastest part, otherwise I'll finish it myself, and she can go home now, but she won't get paid, she seems to snap to it, and starts part 5, so I leave for the day, I come in the next day for dinner shift and chef starts unexpectedly yelling at me, Turns out he came back about an hour, after I left to find my cow walker all by herself in the kitchen. I explain I left her to finish up what should have been a 5 minute job, I have no clue why she was still there an hour later, but why is that my issue? I'm not her boss, we are the same age, who cares that I left her alone, I've been doing that job alone for months. Chef won't listen to my logic, he seems to think I was shirking my duties somehow, so to punish me, he makes up a new rule on the spot, that from now no one leaves the kitchen until everyone is finished. Everyone leaves at the same time, am I clear? He bellows that last part at me, I'm like, whatever you say chef. So, dinner starts normally. After all the diners have gone through the line for last call, chef starts removing his apron and heads for the door. I ask where he's going, he says home, he's forgotten his new rule. I start to follow him out, and I tell all my co-workers okay hit the lights, I guess we gotta leave now, 
since chef is leaving. Keep in mind, dining room is still full of kids, barely any plates have been washed, pots haven't been scrubbed, and no food has been put away. He stops and goes, no, I'm leaving, you guys stay. I said I thought you made it clear we are supposed to all leave together from now on, isn't that the new rule? So he's pissed, but he comes back to the kitchen and stands there glaring at me while we continue working. About 45 minutes later everyone is basically finished with the normal cleanup. Chef's wife and kids are waiting for him in the dining hall. They all lived on camp property, and the kids are getting antsy, so Chef tried to leave again. That's when I remind him about the deep clean that I still have to do. He blows up, starts swearing, calls me a few names. I calmly wait out his tirade, then say hey man, you made the rule. If you want to admit it was stupid and a mistake you can leave right now. Well, he decides not to give in, so I proceed to deep clean the kitchen, just as slowly and thoroughly as I can. That kitchen has never been so damn clean. Because he's never deep cleaned the kitchen, he has no idea how long it's supposed to take, or how many parts are left. Just as I'm finishing the last part he throws his hands in the air, says you win, forget the rule and we all go home. Found out later that my coworker I was accused of callously leaving in the kitchen by herself was just trying to avoid going to Bible study by making it seem she had to work late. Her mother was an overbearing, strict, religious nut who went to the same church as Chef and his family, and when Chef caught her in the kitchen waiting for her mom to pick her up after Bible study, she lied so that he wouldn't tell her mom that she skipped it. TL, DR, in a fit, new boss makes a rule that everyone must leave at the same time. Ends up forcing himself and everyone else to sit around an extra 2 hours, unpaid, waiting for me to finish my job, for which I get paid extra, before admitting the rule was a bad idea and cancelling it. When I reach 1000 subscribers I will be giving away a $25 Amazon gift card away. To enter like subscribe and leave a comment below.